Ticker symbol RIVN landing itself on some pretty nice articles here. It's actually getting some fundamental news and is actually rallying on that news, right? In general, EV stocks are getting a pretty nice pump to the upside, but our RIVN is actually facing an upside here. But let's go over some areas of resistance before we can make that educated decision. Let's start now. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with an RIV and technicals, raw, uh, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis on this hump day Wednesday. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called Arca Bulls. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. So yeah, please notice right over here that we have the RIVN stock alert. Why is Rivian up? Uh, why is Rivian up today, right? So it says right here, EV stocks get a broad boost from VW's purchase of the 5% stake on XPeng and uh, three EV stocks to buy before the breakout showing Tesla and RIVN as one of those, right? So very, very interesting times here. And I am noticing here that there is a, quite a rare breakout actually, but there are two sets of uh, targets that we need to take a look at, okay? So first of all, you are gonna notice here that I do have some resistance levels here that are colored differently, and they are very distinct uh, in respect to gaps that we faced historically, right? So please notice right over here that we have this gap right here, right? Located between the area of 2698 and 2788, and a second area, which is right up here, that is actually facing a support, for, I'm sorry, a gap from this area here. <laughs> so that's 2805 to 2881, making this really interesting uh, resistance level, okay? So it's gonna be a little tough to get over this, but once we do get over it, price action can essentially continue upwards uh, upwards to see maybe even uh, 3064 to around the targets of about 3207, okay? So let's just go ahead and keep this in mind and also practice risk management on our way up, right? So let me go ahead and take you on here to the uh, to the previous chart where I where this is where I'm I'm actually looking at uh, two different sets of formations, right? So we have this one formation here, right? This is an ascending wedge, uh, sorry, a rising wedge, right? So this is uh, naturally a bearish formation itself, and we have a secondary one right over here, right? So actually, sorry about that, I can't actually get it. Let's see, there it is. There it is. Okay. And this is the secondary one right here, right? So let's load up this color. All right. So this is another rising wedge that does have highly, I mean, this is a lot of confluence and the resistance touches, right? Same situation here, right? So what I have noticed is that upon the breakout from today, first of all, we use the, the EMA 21 as that guide, right? As that bounce to the upside. Very good. Very good. So it looks like we have two different sets of uh, traders that are actually respecting both of the formations uh, nicely, right? So as you can see here, upon this breakout, we actually resisted from the top side of the uh, the, the larger scale uh, rising wedge, right? So we got that pullback. And then upon that pullback, we actually realized the support level of the smaller time frame rising wedge, okay? But if we go ahead and apply a trend line from the breakout candle, which is this one right over here, right? So we apply a trend line just like this to here, and that'll give us a price objective, right? This is one of the price objectives. So let's go ahead and apply it to that breakout area. And you can see here that we've already reached that target, right? So geometrically speaking, this is already uh, kind of respecting the, the the play, right? So now, of course, we do have we do several, several other targets, right? So I'm not going to, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. Um, <clears throat> you can go ahead and uh, consider the center of the triangle and the larger part of the triangle as well as the larger term time frame one too, right? So it would be down here as one of them too, right? So arguably speaking, right about there, right? It would be uh, kind of where the line would end up, probably even a little lower, right? Right around there, okay? So this target is going to be the less, we have to just uh, <laughs> practice heavy discretion here, right? Because I, it's, uh, it's kind of high for us to consider. 3252, right? But we were talking about that resistance level just right up here, right? We were talking about a potential breakout to the area of about 3075 to maybe around 3207, right? So it's already kind of meeting that target that we're talking about. It is kind of high, but let's just let's just make sure that we do have it in line there as a probability for us to reach. 
Okay, so that's the that's the highest possible target, right? There is also the center of the triangle from the larger triangle, right? So that would actually uh, give us a target of, let's see, that would actually give us a target of about uh, 30, 22, Right. And then also the we have to we have to keep in the consideration the breakout candle, too. Right. So for the larger triangle. So let's just suppose that we were to break out from here uh, the next trading day. Right. So then we apply that trend line, you know, to the breakout candle, which could be arguably right there. And that would give us a top side target of about twenty nine thirty three. OK, now the same treatment gets applied to the smaller triangle, just like this. Right. So we have to, you know, this, unfortunately, there's two sets of. Uh, two sets of traders here, so we have to keep in line all of those, right? So the breakout candle was, in fact, this one right over here. So we apply it there, and it's taking us to a range of about 2987. What we're going to do here is not respect eight different targets. We're going to merge them, okay? So we're going to take into consideration the resistance level just like this, okay? We're going to combine the triangles and then give us, for it to give us, you know, different targets, Right. So now let's go ahead and take into consideration the center, the center of the triangle. Right. So we'll go ahead and apply that trend line just like this. Damn it. <laughs> just like we have on the other ones. Right. And uh, sorry about that. It could be a little tighter. And then we apply this to the breakout zone. Right. Yet again, which is uh, uh, this candle here. And this candle here is telling us that we can actually face. Oh, oh, you know what? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just put it right here. And we we didn't take the the larger triangle. Did we actually take it? Was this the one from here? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, good. All right. So this one is a bit far away from us. So we can actually consider this one to be a temporary resistance. But what is the what is the target on that one, though? 2833. Let's go back. And uh, it looks like 2833 is landing right within our gap. Right. So we have to <laughs> literally right here. Right. So we have to keep an eye on this. Right. So because there is a resistance to look out for there. So it's everything's rhyming pretty nicely. Right. Let's go ahead and take into consideration the smallest area here. OK, so uh, did I just do that or no? Right. So I go. Um, yeah, I guess so. Right. So let's just go ahead and apply it to that area there. And uh, it's giving us a target of about twenty seven sixty eight. So twenty seven sixty eight. Where is that? Let's see here. Well, what do you know? It's right under the 2788. OK, so the smaller the, the smaller uh, targets that we're looking at from this and this are suggesting the range of our discretionary targets that we located via gaps. Right. So that's looking pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I do think that we do. Uh, I, th I do think that we have some uh, serious opportunities to kind of uh, look into here. Um, we already know and I already identified those areas of resistance. So just like this right here, right? There's one. And uh, this next one here, I guess we can keep that one as a solo line. We're going to make them. We're going to make, you know what? Let's just take the fib retracement now because this is uh, this is how we're going to be able to merge everything together. It'll be the the glue, the gluing component or the, or the, the uh, what marries it together, right? So the high of this candle here, 2769. Let's go ahead and. Uh, take into consideration at 2769 area for an in for uh, for a fib retracement right swing high to swing low and here we go the one spot 618 landing right at this target here right so <laughs> this is why i was saying that this is going to be the glue right it'll it'll essentially uh glue everything for us right so just like this it's a very tiny resistance there but it is uh it is viable right and uh, let's see this target. Yeah, th this target here from this is already very close to the two spot to, to the one spot two seven two. So it's looking pretty good there too, right? And <laughs> yeah, so I think everything is kind of rhyming. And now for the top one, how are we going to glue this one? Well, it's suggesting thirty two fifty. We'll look at the two spot six one eight at thirty one fifty three, right? So less than uh, less than fifty cents away. So naturally, we're going to create our resistance range just like that. Okay, team. So this is th this is essentially the areas that I'm looking for for ticker symbol RIVN over the next few days, right? I mean, uh, on, to be very honest with you, uh, price action, let's see, where did it close? We closed that traditional market, closed at about 27.15. Let's see, after hours, looks like it went a uh, it went up a little bit, close to 27.69, it's 27.67. Okay, so 27.67, I definitely see a high probability here of finding the resistance at about 28.81 tomorrow, right? So... Uh, 2881 being right at about right at about here, which naturally would tell me that we can actually face a resistance total of 2881 to 2923. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust that. 2881. There we go to about 29.23. So this is the overall resistance range that I'm looking at. This is pretty much how I display it in the in the Discord, right? For the uh for the plays. I really set the areas that I think of th that would be higher probability. Sorry you guys, that's my little co-host over there, right? That's my little guy yelling. Uh he is uh here with me, right? Because uh we're alone. <laughs> so he's joining us today for uh well, he let's just say he's feeling very bullish for RIVM. <laughs> all right team so yeah these are the upper bound targets that i'm looking at for rivn and we can have, we can validate let's see 30 minute immediate short term time frame volatility versus momentum let's keep an eye on that too right so let's see this so 30 minute time frame yeah this is the kind of extension we look for to bleed into the four hour like right away like no no uh no crap handed, no nothing, right? So let's see the five minute time frame. All of it is actually still extended and suggesting an upside. Uh, we're pretty much vertical here on the RSI and uh, it's looking pretty strong. I, although I do have to say the 30 minute time frame is losing. Oh, actually it's regaining the, the bullish strength. Never mind. All right. So, <laughs> and and the let's see, the DMI support is actually there too, man. Massive, massive trend support. Okay, so let's go to the hourly time frame. And actually, you know what? Let's just jump onto the four hour because I'm pretty sure all of these are pivoted towards the upside. So here's the four hour time frame, upside pivot, right? So <laughs> there you go. So we are literally within the bullish control zone with an, I mean, vertical pivot here. And we are increasing volatility. So, so just magnificent, ma magnificently, right? So it's awesome. So uh, now, yes, this is the RSI. Look, let me, I, that's actually bothering me so much. I hate it. There we go. <clears throat> all right. So we are... Uh, in the gravitational zone of the bullish control zone or the bull strength percentile with an upside pivot on the SMA 14. Uh, the RSI signal itself is also pivoted straight to the upside. MACD increasing bullish pressure. Uh, we absolutely have DMI support and uh, it's looking very good, right? Hey, little buddy. How you doing, buddy? You're speaking, you're speaking to the crowd here. All right, cool. <laughs> He's three years old team. Yeah, buddy. Hold on just a sec. We're just going to finish this up real uh, real quick here and then uh, get moving, right? Get your water. Drink some water. All right. <laughs> All right. So anyway, team, yeah, let's go ahead and continue on the analysis here. Six hour time frame. You can see here clearly we're in the gravitational zone of the bullish control zone. So this is very likely going to pull us up to the upside, increasing volatility, pretty much vertical on the RSI, right? We made a bullish cross here on the MACD. DMI support, everything is looking magical here, team. Eight hour time frame also upside pivot in the bullish control zone, getting close to that gravitational zone with increasing volatility. And also we have the RSI right within the gravitational area too, or the bull strength percentile. This is highly likely gonna continue to the upside, team. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. This is highly likely continuing to the upside with some natural ebb and flow, right? So please expect the pullback from these areas here in fact the uh, uh there is a chance here of reaching the 2881 tomorrow before we can actually get a pullback back to around our current highs and or 2788 right so even if the asset did decide to come back to 27 uh, 2698 it would in essence just still be another higher low or yeah it would just, <laughs> i mean it, it's just going to be so so big right so yeah i i do think that this is uh extremely extremely bullish uh, seeing that we still, yeah, and now the daily time frame is starting to get that read too. Very, very, very slightly, but it's there. Okay, team. So, yeah, let me just go ahead and leave you off like that because this is, uh, it's massively bullish. And I do expect this to make some pretty nice moves. Let's just put it this way, right? So, uh, we said that the after hours close was 2767, right? So, let's just go ahead and take into consideration this. If we're looking at the top side of the top side target starting at around 3073 where we said, right? That's already 11% up. So now the 3250 target that we were looking for, let's see. That's all that's about a 17.3% up, right? So now looking at this target here, uh I'm sorry, th this was the target, right? 32 uh, spot uh, 54. That that marks off a pretty nice move around 17.26% to the upside. If this starts to combat, it would need actually, it would need the broader market support for this to continue on to the upside even beyond those targets, okay? But this, these are usually targets that I, I tend to, I would already liquidate position here. I would be entirely out, right? Because I'm not about that. I'm not about holding here for the moon. I am about playing the short-term compounding cash and making sure that that multiplies and continues on 
with discipline and consistency, right, team? So if we were to continue to the upside, that 38, that 3488 at the three spot 618 golden mean has my eye, right? Because it does have a lot of correlation here with this resistance here. So let's just go ahead and mark that off as kind of a, I'm, I'm not going to speak of any other target other than this one. Okay, team. So just, uh, I feel like it's getting a little too ridiculous here to talk about anything higher without getting any confirmations, right? So this would be 3487 to 3579. And if that move does get uh, fulfilled, let's see, 3487 to 3579. Let's see, uh, 3487 to 3589. Okay, 3487 would already take you to around 26%. 35 would take you to around 30% gain, okay? So that's a... Uh, that's more than fair, and, and uh, yeah, pretty good. So I, I just full transparency, I may actually uh, play some long calls on this as the upside is more, it's, it's actually of higher probability than they are for the bears, right, So for a downside. So I am favoring, I am absolutely favoring the bulls in this situation. Not only that, is that this looks like it's building a really weirdly shaped inverse head and shoulder, which is pretty much everything in the markets right now as we are recovering. So huge, huge inverse head and shoulders that <laughs> I'm probably not going to feel the most comfortable talking about this target, but screw it. We'll just go ahead and uh, slightly mention it, right? So, and I really do mean slightly. So let's go ahead and take a trend line from the neckline all the way to the bottom side of where the head is located, right? So that's usually how you find your price objective for this formation, just like that. Okay, let's apply it now to the top side of the shoulder, which looks like it's already formed. And this is suggesting a target. Right. That's a lot of noise out there. Right. Well, yeah, it's suggesting that. <laughs> and uh, let's just go ahead and put a trend line there. Right. So let's just see how tight it is with everything else. Right. Let's go. Look at that. Well, that's absolutely powerful. Right. So let's just go ahead and now make an official range out of that ridiculous target. And I would think that I would be in respect to that. <laughs> I'm not going to say those numbers out loud, team. Just know that I uh, I am looking at it and it is still and it is still in the cards. OK, so please, please, please take into consideration this. Take anything that I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well, a very, very good night, and I will catch you at the bell, literally, manana. Adios.